Ahoy there, space patriots. Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. Of course, I'm your host, Kevin, and we got a plethora of SpaceX topics to go over, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so if you've been keeping up with these episodes, you know over the past few weeks, SpaceX moved Booster 7 from the test stand at the launch site back to the high bay at the construction yard. And when they did this, I personally assumed either something went wrong with the test or they were about to install Raptor engines onto them, Raptor 2 to be specific. And last week, we also went over the interview that Elon did with Ted, where he said within a week or a week and a half, they'd be installing those Raptor 2 engines onto a Starship booster. He didn't specifically say booster 7, but that's what we assumed because it was at the high bay and booster 8's currently being built still. Now, when they did move booster 7 to the high bay, I personally thought something must have went wrong during the testing because even though with its predecessor booster 4, they installed all 29 Raptor engines in the high bay, uh, they have been known to install Raptor engines to Starship, to boosters right there at the launch site. But I thought, you know what, it, maybe they are installing Raptors because, you know, that's a lot of Raptor engines. 33 Raptor engines to install is probably more comfortable, to say the least, to do that in a controlled environment in high bay, in an assembly building. Well, it turns out the most likely reason for the move back to the construction yard is because something did go wrong during the cryo test. A leaked image inside Booster 7's LOX tank was taken and shared on Discord, which eventually migrated its way to Twatter. Of course, this picture was taken and shared by a SpaceX employee, which is against the rules, which is why they are choosing to remain anonymous. But the uh, cat's out of the bag now. But the thing is, this isn't exactly like a huge deal for SpaceX. Remember, their way of testing is different from their competitors, including NASA. They like to rapidly build, rapidly test, find out what the problems are, fix them, move on. That's part of the reason why SpaceX in 2018 decided to move away from building Starship out of a carbon composite material to the stainless steel alloy they're currently using. That, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Now, if you're not sure what this damaged piece of the rocket is, I'll just go ahead and tell you that it's called a downcomer, which transfers methane from the methane tank through the middle of the LOX tank to the engines. It's possible Starship Gazer captures some images of its replacement parts already at the site. However, these could also be for future Starship boosters like Booster 8 or Booster 9 or whatever. It's not currently public information whether they're going to try to repair Booster 7 or just move on to Booster 8, which is still being stacked in the high bay. Local John Randolph, fan of the channel, what up John, did take a picture of possibly Booster 8's transport stand the other morning at Starbase. You know, SpaceX crews are working on it, and of course it will be used to transport one of the boosters in the future from the construction yard to the launch site so it can be tested. And, and John here thinks it's going to be for Booster 8, and I have no... I have no reason to question that. Locals tend to have more inside information than those of us that live in Ohio. So I recommend, again, you, you follow all of my sources directly on social media. Give them some love and support. We also covered last week how SpaceX has begun moving battering rams, what I call battering rams, thrust simulators from uh, up the road at Highway 4 down to the launch site. Here, John shared an image of workers installing these thrust simulators at test pad A for what we assume will be near future Starship 24 stress tests. And just a week ago, two weeks max, we discussed how SpaceX began constructing their new Star Factory building vertically, sprouting it out of the ground, but check out how far along it is already. They already got a big part of the skeleton already constructed there. And of course, to reiterate, this building will be used to kind of consolidate all the different processes that go into building starships, allocating them into one spot to make it more streamlined. As Elon said, if you want to launch a thousand starships to Mars every 26 months when that window opens, you're going to need to build a lot of starships and a hell of a lot of Raptor engines too, considering a complete starship super heavy vehicle will consist of 33 Raptor engines and the booster and up to nine more in the upper stage starship. For a total of... To add seven. Carry the one. 20 is 24 42 we got the same thing with the equation on that one if you haven't heard shame on you because i covered this in a video on my cloud liquor channel yesterday elon purchased twatter for 44 billion musk bucks considered to be a massive win for freedom by free speech loving patriots around the world but especially right here in America, because our First Amendment allows it. But according to Walter Isaacson, Elon had no time to celebrate himself. Because, you know, he kind of runs like a half dozen of companies, and I heard that can kind of take up a little bit of your time. So it, last night, while everyone was talking about his recent win for free speech, he was busy in Boca Chica doing his regularly held 10 p.m. meeting on Raptor engine design, where he spent more than an hour working on valve leak solutions. So I guess now we know that that's also an issue that SpaceX is addressing. In other SpaceX news, Hawaiian Airlines has announced that they are proud to be the first major U.S. airline to be selected by SpaceX to provide their customers with the best internet connectivity in the air, Starlink. Check out how happy their passengers are 
Probably not because they're gonna have sweet ass connection, but because they no longer have to wear those modern day face burkas. Not all heroes wear capes, some wear bathrobes. Hawaiian Airlines will equip its Airbus A330 and A321 Neo aircraft with Starlink, as well as an incoming fleet of Boeing 787-9s. Quote, guests will be able to stream content, play games live with friends on the ground, work and collaborate in real time, plan their Hawaii vacation, or share their special island moments on social media. Connecting to the internet will be seamless when guests walk on board without registration pages or payment portals. Starlink installation will begin on select aircraft next year. Well, on Sunday, the first 100% private passenger crew to stay at the space station undocked from the orbiting artificial satellite and began the almost days-long process of phase burns, trunk jettison, deorbit burn, and re-entry, which began the following afternoon. The Dragon capsule re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, which SpaceX captured on their infrared cameras. Pop drogue shoots, brah! which in turn deploy the mains, but uh, Kevin's sad because we didn't really get to see that because they cut to a different camera at the most inappropriate time. But we still got to see those four huge main chutes unfurl themselves after their reefing lines were cut, splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. Bloop. The toasty marshmallow bobber was then fished out of the water by the recovery fleet and cracked open to reveal that the four private astronauts had not gotten seasick all over their spacesuits. Next up is Crew-4, which is now slated to launch on April 27th at a disgusting 3.52 a.m. Eastern Time. So I will definitely not be streaming this one because Kevin likes sleep. And finally, on April 22nd, SpaceX took to Twitter to share a video that was taken during the Inspiration4 mission in celebration of my parents' 44-year anniversary. Definitely not because it was Earth Day. That would make no sense. But uh, we're going to wrap this one up right here, you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Do have a nominal work week, and until our next one, Godspeed.